Hello class. My name is Dr. Ann Wanjiko Moiro. We meet once again uh, for uh, our third lesson. And I'm still reminding you that uh, our unit is Introduction to Educational Psychology. At any time you're quoting, we write BEP 1104, Bachelor's, E is Education. P is psychology, so it should not be a real issue uh, for you. Uh, in our third lesson today, we are going to look about another topic, uh, which is called motivation in the classroom. I'm reminding you that during our last lesson, we focused our efforts on educational psychology. And just to summarize what we said, we saw that if there is someone who is very, very important in the teaching learning process, it is the learner and the teacher that the learner must be able to benefit from the educational process. The learner must be able to learn something new. So we said as a teacher, uh, use simple language, use fluent language that your student will be able to understand. And on top of that, master your content and establish a good relationship with your student. Uh, be positive yourself because when you are positive, you're also going to uh, have a positive impact on your student. So in our topic today, which is motivation, we want to achieve a number of objectives in this lesson. And one of them is we are going to define the term motivation. Then we shall be able to look at the components of motivation. What is it uh, composed of? We shall look at classification of motivation because motivation has got classes. We shall also be able to look at the nature of motivation or characteristics of motivation. And then we'll be able to identify the various types uh, of motivation. Uh, to start with, uh, we start by defining the term motivation. And uh, I can tell you this, my dear student, one of the reasons why you have come to increase, because you already have enough knowledge, to increase your education, to come and do a bachelor's degree in education. It is because you have motivation. It's because you have a goal, you have a dream uh, that you want to achieve in life. Uh, maybe some of you would really, at the end of the day, decide to be lecturers like me in the university. Or become someone of worth, a, mini, a cabinet secretary, or whatever you decide to be. And the reason why you have come, it is because you have that drive, you have that motivation within yourself. You do not want to die eh, in, in your status. You want to, um, to build your potential, to increase your potential, and to become the best that you can be. Someone said that one of the places where uh, you shall be able to find all talents, and all dreams, and all goals, it's in the grave. Yeah? yeah, it's in the grave. So I want to believe that the reason why you're here is so that you can try to uh, push yourself, you can be able to challenge yourself to be able to become the best that you can be. And all what I've said is basically what we refer to as motivation. It is the drive that propels people to try and achieve whatever they want to achieve in, in life. It is what keeps us moving. It is what makes us wake up early in the morning, sleep late, because we have visions and we have goals and there are those things that we really would want to, uh, to achieve in as far as our life are concerned. And uh, that's what I'll say that motivation therefore is what? It is the, fo the force that energizes and it directs a behavior towards a goal. That force that pushes you towards you achieving your goal. According to B.F. Skinner, and he was looking at um, motivation from the school, he said that motivation in the school learning involves arousing, it involves persisting, it involves sustaining, and directing desirable behavior among the runners. So we must make sure that we not only awaken the desires of the runners to run, we also should try and strive and sustain those desires so that at the end of the day, this runner will be able to achieve the best that you can. And because some of you have just come maybe from boarding school, you could even see the effort some teachers were making, waking up literally, waking you in the dormitories, sometimes then at 4 a.m., not for the benefit of the teacher or the principal of the school, but so that you can able to study hard and so that you can able to achieve a good goal. And I believe that's the reason why even as some of you are here, because those teachers propelled you towards the achievement of your, achievement of your goal. So when someone is motivated, therefore, what will he do? 
the person you're engaging and you'll be attracted towards activities that are perceived as having the potential to meet his or her need. You shall leave no stone and turn. I had said that in the, in the previous lesson. We, you are going to do all, all the best as an individual to be able to achieve whatever you want in life because we all have valid dreams and you all have valid aspirations. But all of us, when you have got motivation, each one of us, yes, my dear student, you will be able to meet our, be able to meet our, our goals. Uh, you don't want to ask me, and, uh, and Dr. Ari, do you also have a goal? Yes, I also have a goal. I am really working hard also to become a professor in the future. That is my desire. So every day I'm waking up trying to publish, trying to supervise more students so that I can be also be able to achieve that dream that I have, that in future I will be a professor in the university uh, like that. So motivation is what, what causes you to act. Mm -hmm. Whether it is get, getting a glass of water to reduce your thirst or reading a book to gain knowledge. It is what makes you to wake up. If it's at four, if it's at five, waking up, so that you, sleeping great so that you can able to achieve your, your goal. Including, as you're saying, even simply waking up to go to the tap and fetching water because you are thirsty. That is what is uh, motivation. Um, where, so we say when we motivate ourselves or someone else, we develop incentives or we set up conditions that start or stop behavior. Yeah. So when we motivate ourselves, we motivate others. We propel them towards achieving whatever they want to achieve. We say that in education, motivation deals with the problem of setting up conditions so that learners will perform to the best of their abilities in the academic setting. It's our desire as teachers that students do well, that students benefit. Yes, as I said the other lesson, doing a lot too much and your students are not, not performing well, would rather expend a lot of energy. You'll be motivated so that they can also be able to, uh, be able to benefit themselves. So uh, we often motivate learners by helping them develop an expectancy that a benefit will occur as a result of their participation in an instructional experience. Helping them to understand that when they give themselves to the education, when they become committed to their work, even them, they will definitely be able to uh, achieve and become people of worth uh, within, the, uh, within the society. Uh, we look at what we've called the components of motivation, and I've illustrated there with uh, a diagram uh, which I borrowed from um, uh, the very well, and um, these are the components of motivation. That for there to be motivation, there has to be one, the activation, there has to be the persistence, and there has to be the intensity. So, uh, activation, eh, persistence, and intensity. So you are, not, you are not only persistent, but you even increase the intensity of whatever uh, you, want to, uh, you want to achieve. Eh, so we can start with the first one, activation. It involves the decision to initiate a behavior, such as enrolling for a degree course. Like now, what has made you come to the university? Eh? It is because you want to achieve a degree in education. You want to be uh, a high school teacher, for example. Uh -huh. You'd want to, uh, when others are speaking, you also tell them, I also hold a bachelor's degree in education. That is the activation. And that is what has brought you into the university. That's what you're saying. It is what makes you, the activation is what, what inspires a decision in, in you to want to achieve a certain thing. Then, you are not only activated, but you are persistent. Yeah. And persistence is what? It is continued effort towards a goal. Eh? Being in class at 7, adding classes at 7 p.m., you know, that is, uh, that is uh, the activation of your goal. Reading the modules that are, that, uh, that are set for you online, ensuring that you don't sleep before, you read at least a chapter or two and make sure that you understand it. Go to the chat room and ask the questions that are there. That is what is called the, the persistence. Clarifying those things that you've read in the module and you've not been able to understand. That is what you're calling the, the persistence. And it's, it's not even enough. You also have to increase the intensity. And intensity can be seen in the concentration and vigor that goes into pursuing a goal. You are not leaving anything. You are doing all what you can. You are giving it your all. You are giving it your very, very best. That is what you are calling the intensity. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you give it your best, you shall be able to achieve. When you fail to give it, like this example I've given, those students who study regularly, 
and they are concerned about their work, definitely achieve their goal. They will go onto the graduation uh, ground at the address and they will be conferred the degree. But there are too many others who have joined IQ, but when they lack the intensity and they lack the persistence, for sure, they will not be able to achieve their goals. They will not be able to graduate. And I can, I'm saying this out of experience because I have been here for long. I can tell you that for sure. Um, from there, we look at what you are calling the classification of motivation. And basically, there are two classes of motivation. There are those we call primary, we call them basic, or we call them the physiological needs. These ones are basic, they are innate. We can't do without them. We all need food, we all need water, we all need sleep. And even Maslow had even talked about uh, the need for intimate relationship. You know, These needs arise out of the basic physiology of life. And they're important for survival and the preservation of species. We can't survive without food. We can't survive without water especially water. We cannot survive without, we can survive maybe a few days without water, but we can't survive without food. So it's very important that uh, that is one of the things that will make us wake up to look, for, to look for food. Like you can be able to hear what is happening now in, the, in our country today, that uh, in the recent past, that with this disease, COVID-19, people are really asking, we cannot we cannot survive without food. Let us be given at least a few hours. Don't rock us out. Give us a few hours, at least to go out and look for food because people cannot survive without food. People cannot survive without water. Yesterday, you saw in the news that there were, um, there were some, uh, a certain estate, a certain uh, um, uh, rental house where the, the hard road had closed the, 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 the water taps. And the, the residents, or the, the, the tenants, were, were in, in agitation. Why? Because they know. Nobody can live without water. So those are the things. They are basic needs we can't do without them. Then we have what we refer to as secular needs. And my dear student, you can never achieve secular needs if you have not achieved the primary or the basic needs. No. You have to achieve the primary needs so that you can come to secular needs because secular needs are not innate. Secular needs are acquired. You acquire them as you move on. Like now, academic success is the one that has brought you to the university. That is a secular need. But if you didn't have food, it would be difficult for you to come to, to, come to the school. So secular needs are acquired. Need, need for success, uh -huh. need for power, need for achievement. All those are secular needs. B um, having a high self-esteem is a secular need. But if you have no food, there is no you can have esteem. It will be difficult. So you achieve the basic needs, and then now you can focus on the, uh, the so-called the, um, the secular needs. Uh, uh, that's a diagram I've shown you. Uh, about the motivation. You can see <laughs> those are stairs, huh? yes. And you can see this gentleman is determined. He, even in, he is even in the sport shoes. And you can see those stairs, you can't even see up to where they are going. So this is, a, this is an indication through this diagram of a student who has total motivation. You are willing to do each and everything. You are willing to climb the stairs, willing to wake up at night, Willing to really focus, eh? willing to wake up very early. You focus until you get to the pinnacle of your goal. You get to the, um, to the achievement or to the dream that you have been aspiring about. You are not willing to uh, give up. You are willing to struggle and soldier on so that you can be able to achieve your success. Uh -huh. Then we have what we refer to as the characteristics of motivation. In other words, how does motivated behavior look like? Yeah. How does it look like? And the first thing, my dear student, is that it is a personal and internal feeling. Imagine, even if I tell you, my dear student, to become motivated, but you, within yourself, you don't have the desire, you will not be able to achieve. So it, it is something that is personal, it is something that is internal. This is what I want for myself. In life, this is what I would desire to achieve. In life, I would want to be this. It is something, it is that thing that is propelling you or pushing you within yourself. It's something that is personal, it's something that is internal. On top of that, it is, it is an art of stimulating someone. Yeah, it only you, not any other. Because why are you becoming stimulated? Because there is that which you want to achieve. Like now for you coming to... Uh, to do the bachelor's of de degree education, you want to have a bachelor's degree in education. You are desires to have higher education, higher qualification, so that when the TSC is recruiting next, eh, in four years' time, you will be among those that are going to be recruited. So it stimulates you. Motivation stimulates you towards uh, the achievement of your goal. And for sure, the other characteristic of motivation is that it produces a goal. 
that the moment you become motivated, for sure, you, there is a goal you want to achieve. There can never be motivation without a goal or without a dream. Never. You know, motivation uh, produces a goal. It helps you to work towards your dream, as I said, or to work, or to work towards your inspiration. At the same time, remember again, unfortunately, motivation can either be positive or negative. What, what do you have in mind in this motivation? There are people who are really motivated to revenge. There are really people who are motivated to go and steal. There are people who are motivated to go and harm others. That is negative motivation. My prayer is this, that all of you, you'd have positive motivation. But it's also good to understand that sometimes motivation can be both positive or can be both negative. But ours should be to strive for, for positive motivation so that we can make an impact in the society. Then... Uh, the other thing we say about motivation is that it is system oriented. There is, yeah, it is focused. If it is education, you are waking up early, you are reading your modules as you have said, you are doing your exams, it is systematic. Yeah? Uh, it is procedural uh, because there is that which I have said that is a person you want to achieve. And sometimes you can say that uh, motivation is a sort of beginning, yes. You are, you know, uh, because again, in the sense that if you don't work hard, mm -hmm, if you don't have the motivation, then what's going to happen? You'll not be able to achieve your goal. So you have to really begin with yourself that here I have no alternative. Here I have nothing else to do. I have to read. Here I have to sit for my exams. Here I have to make sure that I pass because I don't want to get a second row. My desire would be to get a first class honors or, and, or get a, a second class uh, upper division. That is what uh, you are beginning with yourself. So that, that is what is, the bargain is what is going to pull you onto the positive side uh, so that you can able to achieve your goal as an individual. Then we have what we refer to as um, uh, types of motivation. We have what we refer to as types of motivation. And basically, uh, the motivation are two. Yeah, there are two. We have what we refer to as intrinsic motivation, and there is what we refer to as extrinsic motivation. Maybe I can ask you, my dear student, what do you think about intrinsic, or what is extrinsic? And I can say that uh, intrinsic motivation is the one that is inside you. Yeah, the drive that is inside you. Yeah, it is what is pushing you. It is what is helping you now to bargain. It is what you have called, it is a personal internal feeling. Uh -huh. It is that positive drive that is within you towards achieving your goal. You are curious. Yeah, you are doing out of, you want to see now, if I really work hard, what is going to happen when once I'm conferred with this degree in education? I'm, I, I will definitely be employed by the TSC. Then after that, I'll do what? I'll come back and do my master's. Then after that, I'll come back and do my PhD. You know, it pulls you eh? because you're curious. You want to know or to see how things are, are going to turn out to be. It really pulls you in the, that is in the positive way. Yeah, and so we can say that intrinsic motivation represents all those things that motivate you based on internal rewards. That is not others who are going to benefit. It is you who is going to benefit. For example, you may be motivated to get a promotion uh -huh, because uh, of self-improvement or the joy of running. Yes, uh, you are all, you might become motivated to succeed because you want to positive to positively affect the rights of the people around you. As I've said, that the reason why you have come back to further your studies, it is because uh, you want that out of that degree you're going to achieve, you're going to make an impact in the society. That uh, instead of maybe teaching primary school, you're not going to teach in high school. And your knowledge is going to have a greater impact there in high school, maybe than, uh, than the primary school. I can, can say, uh, the other day, the TSC announced that 10,000 teachers who have been teaching in primary school they'll be upgraded to go to the to be to they'll be upgraded to go to the high school why because the teacher service commission understands that this degree these students have studied benefits more a high school student than a primary school student so i believe that even you you shall have that drive uh, so that in future you'll be able to contribute uh, to the growth of the high school students so they can also be able to achieve their dreams and they can also be able to they can also be able to to, uh, to achieve, they can be able to achieve, uh, to achieve their goals. 
you, in, in intrinsic motivation, you become motivated internally because you know it is good to do good. You know it is good for you to achieve. You know it is good for you to achieve your dream uh, for your own sake, not necessarily for other people, for your own self. And if there is something that is very important for someone, it is that which benefits you. And that is now the advantage of having the so-called the intrinsic, uh, intrinsic motivation. On the other hand, we have what we refer to as extrinsic motivation. So extrinsic motivation, on the other hand, um, the example some things I give students is that, um, like now those of us who are farmers uh, uh, at home, and uh, you have cut the Napier glass. You can never place the Napier glass on a wheelbarrow, and you tell the wheelbarrow, I want to see you at home, you know? Yeah, it's not possible, yeah. All in class, whenever you left your chair, whenever you left your desk, when you come tomorrow, you shall find it there. You know, unless you put it from point A to point B. Unfortunately, many of us operate like that. Unless they are pushed, yes. And many of us, uh, they, want, they only achieve because maybe they are promised an external reward. And that is what is extrinsic, extrinsic motivation. That it represents all those things that motivate you based on external rewards. So you are not doing it for the good of it. You are not doing it because you know it is good to have it. You are doing it because someone else will recognize you or someone will promote you or someone will see it and appreciate you, which is not the right thing. The best thing is where you have the, uh, the uh, external, I mean, internal motivation. So you say these types of motivation are more common unfortunately, than intrinsic motivation, motivators. And they include achieving things due to a specific incentive. Maybe sometimes a child behaves well, not because uh, they know it is good to behave well, but sometimes they behave well because of fear. Or because a parent told them that if you, if you today you finish your homework, I will bring you a packet of biscuit, or I will bring you a packet of, of ice cream. So you see that child is not well behaved, or is, uh, is, does not finish the homework because they know it's good to finish the homework. No, they are doing it because either they, they fear their parent are going to punish them all because they expect that once they finish the homework, the parent will give them a reward, which is um, basically not appropriate. Eh? Yeah. So we say, all which depend on external factors. Yeah. For example, People want to get a promotion because of the expected race. So you are working hard mm -hmm, to be promoted so that you're going to be given a higher salary. Yeah, not because you know it is good for you to do well. So basically there are those two types, the intrinsic and the extrinsic motivation. But, uh, extrinsic, but asking me my opinion, I would really say it's better for us to have the intrinsic motivation because that is what is going to help us do uh, good because we know it is good to do good and we shall always try to do what is good. Then from here we have what we call the examples of intrin uh, intrinsic motivation or now the subtypes of intrinsic motivation. And one of them, uh, like now in the school, we have what we refer to as competence and learning motivation. Yeah. And you say that competent mo motivation, it's also known as learning motivation. And it, st it states that people are motivated more by the process itself rather than by the reward at the end. Yeah. They are motivated more by the process itself uh -huh, rather than by the reward at the end. And it's the best. You are running you are trying to be competent because you know how good it is for you to be competent. Yes. You know how good it is for you to, uh, to know that thing. Like when people talk of um, like, um, this renowned um, um, public speaker by the name of uh, Professor Pierre Rumumba, although he's a lawyer by profession, he's, he speaks, uh, his vocabulary is, uh, is worth it, you know, and uh, you can see. Uh, he's doing it, he does it very naturally. It comes out very, very naturally. And basically that's what you're saying. Uh, maybe he, has, he does a lot of reading, maybe he, he feels competent or he works on his competence, uh, not so that you can reward him, but because it feels good for when someone is able to pre uh, speak fluently and speak right vocabulary and be able to inspire even, uh, be able to inspire even other people. Uh -huh. um, the reason is that people who are motivated by competence, motivation, are literally motivated by the act of running or getting better as they move towards the completion of a goal or a task instead of the destiny itself. So the focus here is on, the idea is trying to get better, striving to be better than the way you are. Yeah, that is the, 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 the essence of 
competence motivation that any any day i like now being a teacher for many years mine should be to strive and become a better teacher competence motivation try and uh, speak fluently in my class try and communicate to all my students try and make sure that every student who is in my class is able to understand whatever i'm teaching that is what you are referring to as competent not because i shall get any reward basically no but i'll be happy when my students are performing well and when my students have become something in the society then we also have another one referred to as attitude motivation yeah Attitude motivation refers to the type of motivation that is cultivated through the desire to change the way you and other people think and feel. Yeah. You want to change the attitude of people, even yours. Yeah. I am motivated because my desire is to become, um, uh, to become better and even be able to change the attitude of other people. People are, who are motivated by attitude engage in actions and interactions with the express intent of making themselves and the people around them feel better in a positive and uplifting way. You know, that any time I'm interacting with the people because I have a positive attitude, yeah, then I um, am a better person to stay with. I'm a better person to live with. That because I have a positive attitude, I, they know that for sure I will leave them better than I found them. And it's a very, very a good type of motivation that every, uh, that every time you interact with the people, every time you speak with the people, you would speak in positive things to them. Like now telling them there is a, uh, we are going to overcome this COVID-19, uh, things will, can never get worse, they will definitely get better. Is that a matter of days, let's be positive and all that and all that. So people really benefit out of uh, your interaction with them as much as you have also assisted yourself uh, to reduce your stress and to have a, a positive attitude as far as life is concerned. Then we have another motivation we refer to as the creative motivation that many people who are motivated by creativity or the innate drive for creative expression. Uh -huh. When you are motivated by the desire to express yourself or uh -huh, you are uh, tapping into the creative motivation. Examples of creative motivation include things in which you feel compelled to create such as the motivation to write a book, act in a movie, play the guitar, build a product, or start a business. Like I believe now, uh, your creativity is you want to be teachers. Yeah, that is the creative. You have the creative mot um, creative motivation that you you want to uh, recreate yourself. You want to improve yourself so that you can be uh, inspiring teachers in future who are also um, a source of inspiration for your uh, for your students. We also have another one uh, which we normally refer to as achievement motivation. Yeah. It states that people are uh, driven by the desire to pursue and achieve specific goals. This is what I want to achieve more for myself. Yes. Uh, by the time I had this class, uh, my desire is that all my students who have understood uh, at least five things, understood what is motivation, understood what is a component of motivation, understood what are the characteristics of motivation, and understood uh, types of motivation and examples of intrinsic motivation. You see, that is what I want to, I have desired. I, that was my desire as I was starting this class. So every one of us should have that. What goal do you want to achieve by the end of, maybe one hour, by the end of the day, by the end of um, 24 hours, what do you want to achieve? It's a very, very uh, good example of, uh, of motivation. People who are motivated by this type of motivation are driven by the achievement of a task or of the goal itself, not necessarily because of the reward that is attached. It's not because there is any reward, but it, you feel good when you achieve your target. I came to class, this is what I wanted to teach. I, I have been able to teach it, I have been able to achieve it, so I will go home satisfied and happy and fulfilled that my day was not wasted because I did uh, what I was supposed to do. And lastly, uh, like for example, an entrepreneur might, might want to build a business for the joy of building a world-class organization, not necessarily because there is money involved. You have seen many. Like even now during this uh, issue of the COVID, many people have um, dedicated their, um, their resources. Yes, uh, there's someone who said uh, he has given 20 million Mm. to be able to uh, assist people in curbing the coronavirus. You see, he is rich. 
but he is he is not giving, we cannot say he is giving out of his abundance no but he is giving out of the achievement motivation that he he's going to make the life of other people better you know not so that he can be recognized he doesn't need to be recognized he is rich in his own essence you know uh, uh, people like Bill Gates they have foundations uh -huh. and uh, he has already written his will and saying none of my children will benefit from this wealth it shall be distributed in this way you get that they have achieved yes but not for their own benefit but so that others can be able to benefit not for any reward but because they know it is good to do good so i would urge each one of us that we strive to have these various types of intrinsic motivation the achievement the attitude, the creative, uh, so that we can become productive people uh, within, the, uh, within the society. And there, I have given you another example. You can see this person is going all the way. The building is quite far off uh, because uh, it's, a, it's a photographic representation. But you can see the person is determined. And that is how intrinsic motivation is all about. That it doesn't matter the journey. No, your mind is focused. Yeah? You are determined. You are doing, you're going to do everything that can be done or should be done for you to be able to achieve there. And for sure, because he's very determined, this person will walk all the way up to his destination. So I hope that each one of us will do that during this duration of your studies. You become internally motivated so that despite the challenges maybe of school fees, the challenges of the family, challenges of work, but you don't lose your focus, you don't lose your goal so that you can be able to achieve uh, your objective. And uh, uh, before we end the lesson, uh, as usual, uh, I leave you with an assignment. In our next lesson, we shall be looking at examples of uh, extrinsic motivation and how teachers can apply motivation in the classroom setting. Uh, and we always, it's good that you prepare because I already told you what you are, we shall do next. Prepare, uh, get into discussion, uh, go to the chat room, ask each other those questions and so that when you come, uh, you'll be able to uh, make it easy for you and me uh, during our interaction, uh, during the lesson. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Uh, we shall meet uh, during our next lesson. Thank These you. televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.